we can place and create a panel layout. So first, in ePlan, I show you how to take a SEP file, convert it into a 3D macro. And now we're going to open an existing project, and I'm going to show you how to add panels like these and fill them out. So first step is to create a new layout. I'll call it my panel number two, panel two, and there we go. Now, inside this panel, I'm going to insert some enclosures. Now, we do have here already some enclosures. You may find an enclosure that you're looking for. You may not necessarily find it. If you're looking for a specific compo size, I recommend you go to the Rital website. You look for your specific size here on the website, right? And once you have selected it, you have your part number, 88. 81500. Let's take a look. I'm going to look for 88, 81, 500. Take a look. It happens to be there. If it wouldn't have been there, I would have actually just taken it from the data portal and then this would have come in right away. Now to place it, I'm going to just type in 0 space 0 space 0. This is going to place this component right at the origin. Now you can rotate it, you can view it in different uh, angles so you can look at it from the view that you want and if you carefully look on the left hand side you have different logical items that were all predefined by Rital. so you have the enclosure you have the floor the door you have the mounting panel now the mounting panel we're interested in the front view next thing we do is we will place some wire ducts now when you're placing wire ducts um, it typically has the handle right on the uh, middle left side. If you click the letter A, the handle will actually change. So if I want to start at the top left corner, go down, my handle is obviously ideal if it is on the top left hand side. So here it's done. I'm going to place one on the other side. So I'm going to use here obviously the auto snap to be able to snap right on the corner that I want and using the A letter again I change my handle. Now that I have exactly the same length, there we go, we can now place the other ones from here to here and it automatically snaps, it's in there. You can also use an interesting feature that says adopt length H where you select the component and whatever you're placing will take over that link. So you click adopt length, you click on a component you're interested in, it adopts the length and you place it. You can actually do this for different types of components. So for instance a mounting rail that should have exactly the same length instead of actually placing it here from here to here, you could also say right away adopt length from this dock and place it. Now, another thing that works is, of course, also the copy and pasting or the duplicate feature. So if you're duplicating, you can actually say, I want to duplicate three times. The distance will be taken over and you will have your three uh, dinner rails that are placed. So you get the idea, right? You can play around with that. From this point on, you open the 3D panel layout navigator. In this 3D panel layout navigator, you can actually see all the components. You can actually select one component at the time just drag and drop it and it will be placed. You can also place multiple components at the same time. Multiple components, boom, will be placed one next to each other. If you do have something that is a little bit more fancy, like I have here a uh, drive, uh, I believe we call it a drive here, and nope, this drive here, um, it's no longer in the schematic, so here, let's see. All the components, as you can see, that are nice and clean and placed, they have a check mark. So they may be placed on a different panel layout, of course. What you can also do is you can actually, if you have some components that are a little bit more uh, complex, you can take them and place them either on a thin rail or you can actually move down and place them right on the back plate. That's possible, okay? Now, from this point on, you can also place components that are not yet in the schematics because these components, they were existing in the schematics. You can insert devices. So if you remember earlier, we had placed 
and created a macro which we assigned here to this part number. Now when I'm placing the device here it's actually asking me for this device. This macro is pulled in. I can even give it a name. I can actually give it a device tag. Now this device tag will be reflected anywhere in ePlan in the device list or anywhere else where you actually go. What you can also do is you can open your page navigator, open a schematic, open your device navigator and find that same power supply, power 100, drag and drop and it will most likely come up with a question about what exactly do you want. Here this is the component I want. There we go. Uh, it's my power 100 and there. Now this component is linked back to this component. So if you click the letter F or you go to counterpiece, you have a link between the two of them, right? It's all done through the device tag. Now you just have to uh, connect them as you usually do. Uh, this is just part of the plan. Remember the T node, you reverse the T node so it actually connects to the distribution block at the top. You want to place it on L1, L2, there we go, etc. If you place a component here, so let's uh, go and let's place a protection device, a uh, circuit breaker. So we're going to pick here a circuit breaker. Uh, this circuit breaker will be a single circuit breaker at this point, and I'm going to use a part number. Now this part number that I'm picking here has most likely, we'll go and check it out, most likely a dimension, at least a dimension. Sometimes it also has a 3D ma graphical macro. If it does, the nice thing is, of course, if you go back to your panel layout, here we go, uh, we'll actually open the uh, panel layout, the whole uh, backplate like this, and we'll try and find that component, that circuit breaker that we just in, in, entered. It's not in the device navigator, don't get mixed up. It's actually here in this one. That's the component we just placed, and we can now drag and drop it and as you can see, it comes up with the proper graphic. Why? Because, like I said before, the part number had, in the background, had a 3D macro associated to it. So that's basically how it works. And of course, once you are placed here on this side, you can go back to the counterpiece. Now, behind the scene, you have to know that you have to print one day these panels. So you can print the full 3D view, like this, just the backplate view, you can choose whatever you want to do. So how it works is you create a new page, usually a model view page, and this model view page of my panel number two will contain model views. Insert graphic model views. You place the first one, and that's when you choose which panel. Well, it's my panel number two. Now, if I do it just straight up like that, you'll get your uh, 3D isometric view and hidden lines. You want it in wireframes? You can see it in wireframes. You want it in a uh, shading style? There you go. The style is now shading. It's nice and cute, but not really useful for the uh, panel builder. The panel builder, he will look more at something more detailed, but he's going to ask for the panel number two, but he's going to want a drilled down version of the view. He wants exactly a mounting panel front view. By doing this, you can actually add here if you want some additional labelings. And there you go, you have now your panel layout view. And this is the time when you add some dimensions. So these dimensions could all start from the same spot and say, okay, I want to give him this dimension. Or you can actually do it a little bit more uh, fancy by creating a baseline. So this is the first dimension you want. This is the second dimension. Let's just zoom in here. That's the third dimension I want. So you could, of course, if you choose to just pick the bottom of the DIN rail, the bottom of the objects, it's up to you what dimension you're giving the electrician. And when you're finished, there you go, you have all the dimensions. Now, as you know, these dimensions can be modified slightly by uh, specifying uh, if you want two displays or one display, which means 
in inches as well as in millimeters. All the details are there. Plus, you can add on the top right hand side here if you have enough room. So if you want to make some room, you can move these model views a little bit to the side. As you can see, I can take these as blocks. You can even resize these blocks if you can see that you don't need as wide. You can actually narrow down the block and it's always going to be updated. And on the top right hand side there, you can add an enclosure legend. Now the enclosure legend, fairly easy to create. You just have to do a manual placement of an enclosure legend. You can do anything that's on the current page or a manual selection. And if it's a manual selection, you just basically pick here which view it is and you place it there. Now here, as you can see, I still have to squeeze in a little bit or change my report to uh, make it uh, a nice fit. But you get all the components that are on this particular view. Uh, this view that I was not very careful about is my 15th view in this particular project. There we go. We have now the secrets behind the scene to create a 3D panel layout.